What if events went differently? What if Ellie from The Last of Us was in the Call of Duty Zombies timeline? Welcome back, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, to another Halloween special video. And in today's video, we're finally going to be doing a unique crossover with The Last of Us and Call of Duty Black Ops 2. This is where the story will take place. And it will be very interesting because we're going to be picking Ellie from The Last of Us and dropping her off with the transit crew. So this is going to be an interesting Halloween special, and I do want to say that this video would not have happened without Zachary Stonebreaker, so I want to give a massive shout out to him because he wanted me to do this video, and Zachary, he's such a big part of the channel, and he loves giving me so many different ideas, and I really don't mind, like... Honest to God, me and Zachary have been working together for like over two years now, and the ideas that he has and what he's bringing to the table is really nice, and he's done a lot of these different ideas with horror, and he's really trying to push me to do a lot more horror content with like Resident Evil, and again, so I want to give Zachary a big thank you because... He really motivated me to make more Halloween special videos and to really get back into the spirit of this particular holiday. So Zachary, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for your support. But that being said, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, let's dive into the brand new What If episode. Location, Ellie's homeworld on a farm. Ellie Williams smiled as she watched JJ play on the couch. He seemed very happy in his own world, a world where nothing else seemed to matter but his happiness. As he played, Ellie watched him carefully, sipping a cup of coffee from her mug. He was growing fast, she had to admit, and she loved it. Being with him taught her a lot about parenting that she never thought she would learn. From the other end of the room, Ellie could spot Dina, her amazing girlfriend. JJ was Dina's biological son, while Ellie served as his adoptive mother. This was definitely the perfect family. Dina walked towards Ellie and they shared a passionate kiss. However, Ellie backed away a bit. Seeing this, Dina asked Ellie what was wrong with her. Ellie attempted to shy away from the question, but Dina seemed to be insistent on knowing what was wrong. One moment Ellie was fine and the other, she was not. Moreover, this had been happening for quite a while, and Dina needed to know what was really wrong with Ellie. Seeing that there was no avoiding this conversation, Ellie proceeded to explain that she was thinking about Joel Miller again. Hearing this, Dina sighed and held Ellie's hands. She mentioned that she knew that Ellie was still grieving for Joel's death, and such pain never really faded away. However, she needed Ellie to try and be strong. After all, Ellie now had a family, and it was necessary for Ellie to be strong for her family. As Dina spoke, Dina realized that Ellie sighed a heavy sigh. It was then it occurred to her. Dina noted that Ellie wasn't just saddened about Joel's death. However, she was still hurting because of Joel's murderer. Seeing that she had been caught, Ellie admitted that it was difficult sleeping at night without thinking of Abby. Every time she thought about Abby and how Abby deserved to be punished for what she had done to Joel. However, Dina reminded Ellie that revenge wasn't always the best way. Ellie admitted that she was trying her best not to base the entirety of her life on revenge, but it was tougher with every passing day. Hearing this, Dina appeared saddened, but she promised Ellie that she would be there for her no matter what, and Ellie had to believe that. Ellie smiled and noted that she believed Dina, and no matter what happened, she would always come running home to Dina and JJ. And as they spoke, Ellie's skin began to glow. Before Dina could comment on the situation, bright lights surrounded the environment, and by the time it faded away, Ellie was gone. Location, in another dimension, Africa. When Ellie opened her eyes, she had no idea where she was. For some reason, the air seemed very strange to her, and she could literally breathe in the foreign nature of the entire atmosphere. How did she get here? She wondered. However, there wasn't any time to wonder about things like that. Right now, she had to be thinking fast on her feet. 
Her last memory was being with Dina. He could remember the chuckles of JJ as he played on the sofa a distance away. Then, Ellie began to fret. She wondered where they were. What if what happened? To her had happened to them too. She could feel her heart pounding ferociously, not giving her any space to breathe. But then, she could not falter. If she did, she would not forgive herself. She took a deep breath and let her mind relapse into a place of serenity. Thinking about what happened to her was not the best option at the moment. In fact, the best option was for her to find a way and get back home to Dina and JJ. Standing up, she began to look around, wondering which path she had to take. Turning up to look at the sun and the scorching desert around her, Ellie knew that she had to find shelter and fast. But then, her survivor's instincts kicked in. She could not move without having a weapon of some sort. With no gun to rely on, Ellie searched the environment, hoping to find something with a pointed edge. She was lucky. She found a stick on the ground and she picked it up, using her kneecap to break off a part to form an edge. She immediately found a stone around and began to sharpen the stick, knowing fully well that this would serve as a pointed edge and a worthy weapon if need be. With all this settled, Ellie began to move. It did not take long before Ellie faced opposition. In time, she heard a growl and thinking quickly, she jumped behind a rock. On jumping behind the rock, she was quite unsurprised to see what she saw. It was a zombie, moving around looking for who to devour. Apparently, no matter how foreign a place was, zombies seemed to be the only constant. Ellie contemplated attacking the zombie but immediately decided against it. While she knew that she was immune to the zombie virus, she considered that this was not her world and she did not know if her immunity still existed here. It was better to be safe than sorry. She controlled her breathing, carefully crouching as the zombie moved around with reckless abandon. In her experience, zombies could sense the environment around them, and she did not want to attract the attention of the zombies. However, in her bid to crouch better, she accidentally stepped on a stick. The crack was definitely loud enough, and it did exactly what she was trying to avoid. It brought the zombies' attention. Oh shit. Ellie sighed. The zombie charged at her and Ellie immediately took a defensive stance. She dodged all the zombie's attacks and tried her best to destabilize the zombie. She understood that the zombie was much physically stronger than her, so close contact was not advisable. Therefore, she continued her evasive techniques until she found a loophole in the zombie's fighting technique. Then, she struck it with the stick. It pierced through its heart. Weakening the zombie, she proceeded to strike it through the head. That delivered the killing blow. The zombie fell on the floor, dead for real, and Ellie heaved a heavy sigh. However, this was only the beginning. That was the moment she began to hear voices in her head. Were those whispers? The voice had a hint of command to it and asked Ellie to find him. Ellie asked who the voice was, but she did not get a response. The voice only told her to find him, and she did not hear anything anymore. Then she heard a sound and she turned around to see four more zombies coming into the picture. She immediately picked up her stick and assumed a fighting stance. However, she knew that she would not be able to face all these zombies on her own. Right now, she needed a miracle or she was essentially screwed. Before she could react, she heard gunshots and in time, the zombies were on the floor, dead. Surprised, she turned to see four people. They all had guns, and they did not seem very welcoming of strangers. However, they just saved her life. Seeing that she might also be considered a threat, Ellie immediately raised her hands in the air in a defensive manner, noting that she was a lost girl and she could be trusted. In time, they ascertained this and let her join their crew. They introduced themselves as Misty, Marlton, Russman, and Stollinger. Location, The Rift, Africa. In time, Ellie became assimilated into their mission. Apparently, these four had been contacted by two forces who wanted to build towers. Already, they had constructed two towers and one more was left. However, it seemed like these two forces were combating against each other, and they had to finally choose the one that they had to build the final tower for. However, 
Ellie could not help but wonder if they weren't all being used by these forces. Anyway, the mission had to go on. Maybe one of these forces could take Ellie home. After all, this was all she wanted. As she walked with Stuhlinger, she suddenly heard the voices in her head again. The voices were telling her that she had found him, and now she had to help his tower instead. She struggled to block out the voices, but she could not. However, she turned and realized Stuhlinger was wincing in the same manner. You hear it too, don't you? Ellie asked. Of course. Stullinger tried to evade her realization, but soon they realized they were more similar than they could imagine. As it turned out, Ellie could hear the voice that only Stollinger could hear. It was the voice of Richthofen. Seeing that Ellie wanted to know what was happening, Stuhlinger explained to her that he was the only person who could hear Richthofen because he was formerly a member of the Flesh, a cannibalistic race of humans. From the looks of things, it seemed that Richthofen was using Stuhlinger's past to blackmail him into powering up his own tower. Ellie then began to question the veracity of Maxis's own mission too. What was the proof that Maxis did not have evil intentions as well? What if the real battle was the battle to find the lesser evil? Location, Western Town, The Rift. When they had reached the Western Town, Ellie began to feel uneasy. She could not understand what she was feeling inside, but she was certain it wasn't good. But things were about to get worse. The group met and befriended a giant named Arthur. He was set to help them on their quest. However, Ellie could feel her uneasiness getting worse. When Arthur stepped in to check on her, she grabbed his hand out of reflex and suddenly, he dematerialized into a million pieces. He was gone! The group was shocked at what happened, and suddenly their guns were pointed at Ellie, who explained that she did not know what was happening. Seeing that they were not going to believe her, Ellie took to her heels amidst gunshots from people she had just worked with. The only good thing about this encounter was that she had guns of her own now. For most of her journey alone, Ellie had to fight off zombies. However, at some point, she fell to the floor, exhausted. This was the moment she heard the voice again, louder and clearer. It was Richthofen, reaching out to her again. Richthofen informed her that he understood her pain and he wanted to help her. He told her that she was actually infected with a time sickness, thanks to the multiple time quakes in the universe. This was what brought her here and she was dying slowly. What she did to Arthur was a fraction of what she would do. The moment she died, and she did not have much time, she would wipe out everything in a mile. However, he offered a solution. She had to help his tower. Ellie, suddenly remembering that she had to get back to Dina and JJ, accepted the deal. As Ellie was working alone, she realized she was quite fast. As she tried to assemble the tower, she was met with a shocker. Here was Abby, the woman she hated the most, right in front of her. Abby was shocked at what she was doing here, but the moment she saw Ellie, she was prepared to fight. Ellie immediately dueled Abby, her rage taking over. In time, Ellie assumed the upper hand, gun pointed at Abby. However, before she could shoot, she suddenly realized that her time sickness must have brought Abby to this world, the same way it teleported Arthur away. She had harbored revenge for Abby for so long that her subconscious must have triggered the time to bring her here. It was then Ellie understood. Richthofen had been lying to her. He knew all along that she could have gone home any time, and he did not tell her because he wanted to use her. She could easily manipulate her time sickness and get out of here. Yes, she would die, but at least she'd have the chance for redemption. Then, Ellie dropped her gun and noted that revenge wasn't worth it. She had better things to do. Closing her eyes and concentrating, Ellie channeled the time sickness inside her and did something she knew was right. Using her power, she blocked out Maxis and Richthofen from the rest of the group. It was time these forces stopped manipulating innocent people. Moreover, she wiped out zombies in a two-mile radius. This place was now a safe zone, and anyone who wanted to be safe from zombies could come here. She also used the power to send Abby home. Ellie could feel herself slipping away, but she had to see Dina and JJ one last time. 
As she watched them from a distance, she smiled at them and whispered that she would always be with them. Moreover, she was glad that she was doing a heroic thing before she died. While she was unfortunate to be infected with the time sickness, she used it to her advantage. And with that, Ellie transported herself to space, her skin disintegrating piece by piece. And that is going to be it for what if Ellie was in Call of Duty Zombies Black Ops 2. Now, what did you think of the storyline and would you guys like us to continue this series? Maybe we could go somewhere else, maybe Mob of the Dead. We could do so many different maps and so many different timelines because Call of Duty Zombies is just a plethora of timelines. It's absolutely crazy. It's probably almost near to impossible to just write the entire Call of Duty Zombies storyline into one single video. So I think plucking certain events here and there within the timeline and shifting it is really just all that I could physically do personally. But that being said, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, if you guys are new around here and would like to see more videos, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. But thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Take care, and have a wonderful day. Peace out.